What are we talking about today? It grows tall from the little bitty seed you plant in the ground, grows way up in the air, well, are, and, wait, and then the next still. thing you know, it's like Jack and the Beanstalk. What's he looking for? Corn. <laughs> yeah, but ours, ours don't grow that tall. <laughs> It's because we don't get no rain. If you people have watched some videos in the past, you'll see it was sort of green because we got like four or five weeks ahead. Look across here now. It's August in Oklahoma, folks, in the southwest corner, and it is drier than a popcorn fart in a whirlwind, I'm telling you for sure. Corn ribs, yes. Now, oh my gosh, they was all over the internet. You could see them things and everybody's talking about corn ribs and I'm thinking, I don't know what they are. So we experimented. Easiest way to prepare corn and eat it. But also, we're gonna show you how to cook with corn as a fuel in some corn cob smoked ribs. Thanks to a good viewer from South Dakota that said, hey, we ain't got a lot of trees, but we got a lot of corn. You should try this, Kent. So we're gonna see what happens. All of you know how to shuck corn. I'm sure you do. Easiest thing in the world. Just pull it off, got that silk on it. But when you go to the store and you're looking for corn and you go to feeling of it in that shuck, go ahead and give it a mash there around here. Make sure it ain't just hard as a rock. And if you can, just pull it back just a little just to make sure you see that good ripeness in that corn. Get them silks off there best you can. They will burn off over in the fire. It's just really what Mother Nature calls as added dental floss, so you'll be okay with it. You're gonna need a cutting board and a really sharp knife because we're not just throwing them on the grill just like that. And folks, you'll be really careful. Make sure your cutting board, let me move this around just a little. Don't slide around on you because I don't want you to cut a hand off or a finger or anything else. Just come back, cut it around here. We gotta have a flat surface, okay? Come back up here at the other end. Now, I've learned through trial and error, if it's a big tall piece of corn like this, I'm probably gonna cut them in half because we gotta come back in here, hit dead center on this, and then go down here and just keep pushing that knife to where you can see it go down through dead center and see what happens if it's a big one sometime, it'll break off there. Just keep on. But we're gonna come back, go right here again. You can lay this down if you want, but a lot of times it'll split and won't come out right. Just be careful when you start this process. Go down slow and easy. And there you have a corn rib. Go ahead and cut them off. We're gonna come back in here halfway. Now we're much more apt to get this to cut plumb through pretty easily. Stand her back up here. It's like splitting firewood is as they get hot and cook, they're gonna curl and it'll take the resemblance of a rib. So bear with me as we get the rest of them cut up. In the bowl it went, now you can use avocado oil, you can use any kind of oil you want, besides WD-40 or Pennzoil, but we need to give these a pretty good little soaking Make sure that everybody's got, ooh, one jumped out. Got some oil on them. Now I'm gonna give you two different recipes to try on this. One is with flaming Hot Cheetos. That'll stick to a sour cream base there, but also a garlic sriracha lime sauce that goes on top and a little bit of what? Queso fresco cheese right on top of it. It is fine dining. I'll see you at the grill and let's begin. Well. Started out with some Fogo hardwood lump, but we're gonna go to the smoky wood sack we are. And what is this? Some post oak. Yes, I do like some post oak. This stuff is really good wood, and uh, I found out that it makes a really great smoke. Now, a lot of you, like I say, y'all just be throwing that right on the grill and just grilling it. That is fine, but you're gonna get so much more flavor when we can give this thing some smoke. So we're gonna throw a little of that and a piece of hickory in there with it. Got the fire down as low as it'll go. Let's just slow them on there. And I would like to lay the first time when we're smoking this side down, then we'll crank that fire up, get it over here to where we can really get to making some corn ribs. Let's get the lid shut, see if we can get that flame to calm down. Folks, this is, if you can keep that at the bottom as far away from that corn, or you can even cook it indirect, but I don't want it to just sit there and go to cooking all of a sudden. I want that smoke to penetrate. It is a hot fire, it is. It's probably gonna peg out here in a minute, but 
as long as we can sort of starve it for some oxygen, got all the vents shut to where we can just get some smoke through there, that's what we're after. Going to let that go about five to ten minutes, and then we'll go to making what? Really, really, really good grilled corn ribs. While that's cooking, it's time to whip up some sauce here right quick, and this is really just our first one, the sour cream base that's gonna get them flaming hot, crunchy Cheetos to stick right on top. So let's just start with some sour cream. We're gonna add a little ranch to it, a little bit of lime juice right here, a little bit of mesquite seasoning, because we gotta have a little ancho chili and a little bit of salt base to it. And then what? We're gonna add some parm -ajan. and Cletus, I know you would really like this, but you don't eat your corn, remember? So just bear with me, Cletus. There might be another scrap here in a minute. We got the first sauce mixed up, so what is the next one? It's a little bit of sriracha, uh-huh. Some brown sugar, because I want to counteract a little bit of that heat there. Some lime juice. I'll meet y'all at the grill, because it is time to start cooking some corn. My stomach is growling, they'll hear it. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> you haven't had your breakfast yet. Well, fire is licking, it is. So let's get that corn down here on this end. It is smoked, you can see it's got that, already it's tender. You could eat it just like this, but no, we gotta give it that char. We gotta give it, get that sugar up there on that corn. Let me get everybody turned over to where they can go to getting some color on them. It is a hot fire. I'd be wishing I had three pairs of gloves and some ice water. See how that one has curled? Oh my goodness. Things is happening quick right here, they are. You've seen them get good and smoky and tender and then we give them a good char, we did. Moved them to the cooler part of the grill. First batter up there to the batter's box to watch the sriracha lime brown sugar sauce and we just gonna give them a good glazing right here. And you can see how that stuff just makes everything shine like a silver dollar in a goat's butt. I mean, things is good. Woo. Next one is our sour cream base it is. I wanna give these a really good coat because folks, this is the base for them flaming hot Cheetos to stick to. But you seen how them things curled up there to resemble a rib. First one I'm gonna try here is with a little of this queso fresco on that sriracha and lime brown sugar. Mm. That baby right there. See them Cheetos in there? Flaming hot they are. And they gonna give it a little crunch. Mm. Oh. Mm. Do the popcorn. Ho! Oh, popcorn. Oh, man. Woo. I love corn. Corn is what's happening. I can't pick a winner in there. This one here, if you're after a little bit of a more of a bite and a spice, that you go to. But them crunchy Cheetos on there add so much to that. But really, the ranch and the Parmesan in there, mm, it is so good. But I'm feeling pretty generous today, so we're going to throw you something in there for free. We are. Now, everybody's heard of Mexican street corn. We did a video on that, folks, and, and I really love the taste and the flavor that that brings out. When you're really wanting to grill that Mexican street corn, and when you're rolling that corn over, make sure you get that evenly color all the way throughout to where all them kernels are getting that golden dark brown and getting that char on there because it's releasing all that sugar that's coming up, and that's where you get that sweetness. 
But I watch my mother and I even watch Shan. They don't eat corn on the cob. No, they slice it off there first and then they eat it. So folks, we got you covered up with this recipe. We do. Then we're going to mix a sour cream and all those flavors that go back in there. Blend in the poblano. If you want a little heat, add a jalapeno, the onion. Mix that back up in that skillet. Let it cook through so we get them flavors to blend throughout. Then you've got a corn dip. You can serve it as corn pudding. You can serve it any way you like, but oh my gosh, that stuff is good and they'll be asking for more. But folks, don't leave me now because due to my good friend up there in South Dakota that sent me that message and he said this, we ain't got a lot of trees in South Dakota, but we got a lot of corn. Smoke them ribs with them corn cobs. We're not gonna throw these away, no. These are gonna set and dry out a little while and we're gonna use them with some more that we've got gathered up as the fuel to give them ribs a smoke. Smoking ribs with corn cobs. Yes, I had to fight Major off of them to keep him from eating the cob and all. I didn't have enough corn out of the garden that was dried, so went and bought a whole bunch. But the cobs are laying there, letting them sun dry and air out. But I noticed that some of the cobs have been moved, and it's by this guy here that's doing the damage to them. So we have a corn thief. That little bitty fellow there who ain't got all his front teeth can clean some corn off the kernel. He can. But let's talk about them ribs first. When you go to the store, especially if you're looking for them baby backs, I need you to look through there really well. And if you see a bone right up there close to the top, that's called a shiner. Pass him by. We want big, thick, meaty ribs. I like to buy them ribs that's got some texture to them, be covered with meat, and look for a little marbling in there. Now, when you get them ribs home, what are you gonna do? You're gonna take you a spoon and dip right under that membrane on the back, and then you can either do it with your finger or just grab it by a paper towel and just pull it all the way off. That way it's gonna let that seasoning penetrate in there really well. When I seasoned these ribs, and I just went back and seasoned them lightly with our original because I really wanna see what this smoke is all about from these corn cobs. So when we season them ribs, we put them on a wire rack on a cookie sheet place them in the ice box and they've been in there for exactly 12 hours, sort of like dry brinings. Now in over there at our little roughneck smoker, we have started with a bed of coals because we're gonna need some because our garden did not produce enough corn cobs to get this to where it's just completely full of corn cobs to start. Now I can remember using these all the time when I was young, if we was building a fire, and when they'd get good and dry, like this little feller is, you just throw them in there. They was great fire starter, they was. Ready? It kind of smells like cornflake. Uh-huh. Hear them popping in there? Yeah. There's some corn left on them. Are we live? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, we got the corn in there. Shan said it sort of smelled like cornflakes. Sort of smells like corn nuts to me too, in a way. Yeah. But you can hear some of them kernels that might left on there be popping. So no. No rib rack today, we're going straight on, just like this. Let's shut that lid, latch her down tight. We're gonna to try to run that temperature about 240, and these will probably go four to four and a half hours along in there. Save me some corn cobs so we could come back here a little bit later and add some more if them things burn up a little quick, but I'll meet y'all back out here and we'll take a look and see what's happening with corn cob smoked ribs. cooking and we know they're done how come what reason because when you pick them ribs up and they bend just a little and they want to crack them ribs is tender they could have been pulled about 15 20 minutes earlier but 
I don't put any barbecue sauce on these, nothing like that. I seasoned them pretty lightly. I wanted to see the flavor that the corn cob smoke brought up there. And I was really sort of amazed at how long them corn cobs lasted in that little roughneck smoker over there. Maintained that temperature of about 230 for about four hours, really easy, it did. And I want you to look here, if, let me just pick you this one right here. And you can see that smoke ring got pretty deep up in here for some corn cob. So I'm just gonna try one and see what's happening. Mm. They are definitely tender, fall off the bone. Now I want like your honest review. Mm. Like what do you think? Did it, did it do something different? It did change them to me a more mellow flavor. But to me, it's almost nearly like a pulled pork in a way. Um, I, I mean, get I that in the smoke. One and I, I can't, I honestly can't even describe the flavor, but it is slightly different. Yes. It's not like overpowering. Uh -uh. It was, it was nice. Yeah, I mean, I would not be afraid to cook with some corn cobs again because this stuff has really done well. I think the dry brining of a, of a rib, and I've done it with pork chops and with meat and stuff like that, but to dry brine it in an ice box overnight, it really pulled out a lot of moisture in these ribs because folks, these things, you don't have to chew off the bone, you just have to pull them off the bone. We may have to plow up the rest of the yard and plant 40, 50 acres of corn next year, Sam. I'm gonna have one more little bite. Mm. Make me want to do that old Jed Clampett digging taters, shucking corn dance. Get that shovel and put her in the ground, put her in the ground. Shuck him in here, shuck him in Pull that corn, get her in there, and rub it off the kernel, cut it all in there. Oh. Folks, corn is a great thing, and corn is pretty cheap. So be looking for that sweet corn. Now, I did look on Amazon, and you can buy a whole corn cob. Still got the corn on it, dried out. But we hope you enjoyed this, because we sure did. Before I go any further, it's at 104 degrees right now, and I have a lot of faithful pups that have been out here cooking ribs with me. There you go, Snows, Biggie, Cletus, Duker, St. Lou, everybody had a bite. Now it is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag of flying on camp wherever we may be. But remember, lift them folks up in Hawaii in prayer and give them some thought there because, hey, it was a pretty bad deal. But remember, we're all good friends, we're all good neighbors, and we got to help each other out. Rest of you, come on up in here close. I am going to give you a corn shucking hug. I am going to pull it back. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the best corn cob smoked rib trail ever. In this video, we're going to show you all the crazy things you can do with corn. You can even sing the song, Jimmy Crack Corn, I don't care. Jimmy Crack Corn, and I don't care. Yep, my name's Cowboy Kent, and I cook corn. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who do we appreciate? It is Shan. It is Shan. A little corn. Yeah.